Hi, this is Dr. Jeffrey Hanna at Atlas Health Australia. I want to share with you a little video today about how your neck could be connected with so many things in the lower back. Now, I'm going to say this first and foremost, that low back pain, it's one of the most common things that people can and do experience. And so oftentimes, they're going to go to general chiropractor, physiotherapist, etc., etc. And the advice is to try to manage things as conservatively as possible. So you've probably had any number of different tests that show bulging discs, herniations, some wear and tear kinds of damage and all this sort of stuff. So you've done A, B, C, X, Y, Z, but there's still something that is going on. That's what I want to address. I want to address the possibility that the issue could be coming from the other end of the spectrum. So that is up at the top. So what I've got here is a little illustration and just a basic model of the spine. And one of the things with these models of the spine, yeah, they're useful for teaching purposes, but they're not exactly anatomically correct. And so I wanna highlight that what so many of them show is if we get in there nice and close, you might be able to see all these yellow nerves coming out of the spaces between the vertebra. And then you'd see that we have like in between all of that, we have the spinal cord coming all of the way down. Well, that is not exactly the way that things are actually constructed. They're actually constructed like this. So this is a very poor illustration of somebody from the side with their brain, with their brain tail, that is their spinal cord. And then I've done, not to scale, but a bunch of little illustrations for all of the vertebra where they would be. So what I wanna point out for you, number one, is that your spinal cord does not actually go all the way down to your tailbone, AKA your sacrum, it stops kind of in the, the small of your back, right about there at around the level of uh, L1 and L2. And this is why if a person ever needs a spinal tap, they're able to puncture into this spot just a little lower without worrying about sticking it straight into the cord. Now they have to be careful to make sure that they're not gonna penetrate into any nerve roots or anything like that, but it's relatively safe procedure, relatively speaking, because it's not actually there. Now, why does that matter? And it's because oh so many different kinds of back pain are attributed to the bulging discs and the wear and tear damage and all this sort of stuff. But that may not be the entire story because it could have something to do with the tension, not necessarily on the nerve, but maybe on the cord in this system itself. So I've drawn the bone and I've drawn the nerve, but I need to add something else in here. And it's something that's called the dura mater. And what the dura is, is it is a connective tissue layer that actually goes all the way around and protects your brain and your spinal cord from things like this. And it goes all the way down to the bottom and then goes back all the way on the other side, kind of like this as I'm illustrating for you in the green. So inside of that is what's going to be called cerebrospinal fluid. It is what gives the energy, the nutrients, and the circulation so that your nervous system can actually function properly. Not exactly the same, but think of it to a degree as like battery acid so that you can get a proper charge going and things like that, cleaning away debris, etc., etc. Now, it is not completely freely floating in here, and it's because what we have is we have ligaments on the inside of this dura that anchor it into place. And so at every single level, you're gonna have the fancy term for these, they're called dentate ligaments, and they connect every single one of these layers, even down through here, all the way, and that's fine. So think of them like loose pieces of string offering a little bit of additional support. However, you've got stronger versions of these ligaments in the upper part of your neck and down in your tailbone and inside of the skull. So firstly, on the inside of the skull, imagine that we were to draw tighter, thicker connections kind of all the way around like this. And if these are ever damaged, I think you could appreciate, you know, this could be one of the reasons why a person can develop swelling on the brain after a concussion. Now, we also have super strong, super thick versions of these ligaments at the C1 and at the C2 vertebra. And what this does is this protects your nervous system from being damaged every time that you flex your head up and down or turn it side to side. It's so that the thing does not get squished or crushed. Now, you've also got one of these super thick ligaments right down at the very bottom of your spinal cord that's gonna run like this, and it's called the phylum terminale, that's its fancy name, and it's gonna anchor onto the, the base of the tailbone on the inside right down at about the level of S1, S2. So what we essentially have is we have a freely floating neurological system, and it's gonna be suspended by all of these cables at the top 
and at the bottom especially. So think of it, if you would, that what we actually have is we have a loose piece of string hanging like this, anchored at the top, anchored at the bottom. Now I want you to think about this for a second. If we wanted to put tension onto that string, how could we do that? Well, number one, we could either take the string and we could pull it from the bottom like this. And that typically is gonna be putting stress and tension back up here at the top. Or you could do it the other way around. You could say that there is something going on at the top and it's pulling the string like this. Now, if we do that, where is the tension going to be perceived? It's gonna be down here. In other words, what I'm proposing as a possibility is that if you have tension going on because something is not congruent in the upper part of the neck and the skull in this area right through here, it can produce tension through the entire system that may actually manifest as lower back pain. Very, very simple kind of test for this is, you've probably had this if you've had lower back or you've had the sciatic or the shooting into the leg. They lie you down on the back of a table, they lift your leg up to see if it can reproduce some of the tension. Well, do that same test, but all you do is you tip your neck forwards or backwards, or you look to see does moving the position of your head plus or minus change the tension or the discomfort you feel in the lower back. Now, it's not always an absolute, but it's some kind of an interesting association that people have noticed before. So I say this and I share this with you to let you know, okay, if you've been dealing with all kinds of different back issues, you've done this back treatment, that back treatment, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and yet it still doesn't work. I want to raise the possibility that maybe, maybe, maybe the issue could be coming from the opposite side of the spectrum. In case I would ask you, okay, has anybody actually had a look to see what's going on with your cervical spine? What is going on with your neck? Because maybe, just maybe there could be a connection. So I hope that you've enjoyed this little video, a little bit technical, but uh, I think very valuable. If so, please do you know, share us a few comments, things like that. If there's somebody that you can think of who would benefit from checking this video out, please share that with them. And then if you're looking for more information or about how to reach us, things like that, you can visit us at atlashealth.com.au or you can check us out on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, et cetera, et cetera. This is Dr. Jeffrey Hanna at Atlas Health Australia reminding you, take care of your neck. It's your lifeline to well-being.